welcome to another episode of Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today I want to expose some material that's being put out on the internet by the big, huge internet web portal, YouTube, and it's pure propaganda for children. Unfortunately, we live in a world where adults, people who should know better, adults who are supposed to have responsibility, they are now putting out harmful, evil propaganda for children to try to persuade children to sin. You know, the Bible talks about uh, far better if a man is not even born than to mislead a little child. It'd be better if a person had a millstone or a heavy object wrapped around his head and thrown into the water so that he would go down, down, down to his grave than to mislead a child. That's in the New Testament. You can look that up. Go to a concordance. I'll make you search a little bit. Go to the Bible. Go to the New Testament. Find the place in the Bible where it says, it's better if a man had a millstone tied around his neck and thrown into the water than to mislead a little child or lead a little child into sin. Well, when we look around in our pagan secular society, this society that's gone crazy, gone chaotic, it's gone mad, if you want to put it in those terms, in psychological terms, but it's a spiritual sickness. And the adults who should be leading the children into the truth, into good, into right, they are leading the children into sin and evil. And we have a video clip today I want to show you presented by Canadian broadcaster Mario Bryson. And what he has done is compiled a couple of video clips from YouTube, one of them sponsored, uh, showcased by YouTube in honor of quote unquote Pride Month. And we all know what that means. The LGBT activists have appropriated a month out of the year and they have designated this Gay Pride Month. And now everybody, it seems like, has to follow along and put up with all of these activities. Uh, you have to, if you're a citizen of a city, you have to sit back and abide while this uh, Gay Pride Day, this Gay Pride Parade has to march on by your city with people uh, looking like fools out there dancing in hardly any clothing. Um, men, grown men out there lounging around and parading and flaunting around in women's clothing, uh, men trying to look like women, women trying to look like men, floats out there, big uh, flamboyant floats with uh, obs obscene uh, slogans, and even little children in the crowd, their parents take them to these disgusting events. And as citizens, we just have to sit back and abide by all this because this is the new normal, supposedly. Well, I think as Christians, we need to object to these things. We need to expose these things. We need to talk about them. And today I want to show a video clip by a presentation that is exposing these things. And what the clip reveals is that there's an adult in a room with children. And this adult is trying to promote the normalization of perversion. Um, this adult is trying to get these children to go along with the perversity that she is presenting. Now, she's an adult. She should know better. But evidently, she has bought in totally to the LGBT agenda. And so now that's not enough. She wants to try to get the kids involved. Yes, you have to try to get the kids involved. That's the next agenda item. Now that the LGBT activists have persuaded the voting age people to get behind their agenda, or at least tolerate their agenda, or at least don't speak out against their agenda, now the agenda is to get the children involved. And so now we see this disgusting presentation of this woman, kind of looks like a teacher. She's in a teaching position in this classroom situation, and she has all these children around, and she is now promoting the perversity of Gay Pride June. 
the month of June, uh, supposedly is set aside for gay pride festivities and everything. This is an abomination before the eyes of God. It's all throughout the scripture as described as an abomination in the Old Testament. It was so disgusting that the Israelites were commanded by God himself that if a man uh, lies with a man as he would lie with a woman, as he would his own wife, he is to be stoned to death. In other words, the death penalty was enacted because of this grave sin. Now, here we are uh, in the 21st century, and we have a nation, the United States, not a perfect nation by any means, never was and never will be, but a formally Christian consensus-led nation, which I mean by that is that even though everyone wasn't ever a Christian, everyone in this country, the colonists, were not all Christians, and the nation was not uh, led by a Christian monarchy or a Christian government per se, it held a Christian consensus. People had Bibles in their log cabins in the early days, and the Bible was the bestseller and is the bestseller in our nation, and the Bible was read by more people than any other book, and its influence spread far and wide, and people thought in terms of the biblical worldview. And on this moral issue, it was very clear, no question about it, that homosexuality was a grave sin, and anyone who did that would be ostracized, marginalized, or even exiled or banned from the community, sent packing. Why? Because you didn't want that kind of activity influencing children. You didn't want children thinking that something as perverse and disgusting and ugly and dirty as this practice would be normal. You don't ever want children to begin to think that bad things should be normal. And so that's why there was the stigma for centuries about this sin. Well, today, due to the LGB activism and the social media campaigns and the brainwashing of mainstream media, we have a situation now where it seems like the polls indicate that a majority of Americans now say it's okay, or at least will tolerate this, but that does not relieve Christians and others from educating their children to the truth that this is a sin and it shall not be done and it shall not be tolerated in the Christian community and it shall not be tolerated anywhere where wisdom prevails. But as you will see in this video clip, the adults in our pagan secular world are trying to brainwash the children. So Mario Bryson is going to present us with a video clip showing this disgusting attempt by this so-called uh, teacher to educate the children on how we should be loving and accepting and tolerate and celebrate the LGBT perversion. And so let's watch that video and then I'll come back at the end for a few extra comments. Let's watch. Happy Pride, everybody. Happy Pride. Who here knows what gay pride means? It means where like all the gay people, transgender, lesbian, bisexual people gather up and celebrate. That's absolutely right. It's a celebration of sexual diversity. So I'm not gay, but I'm a gay ally. Are you gay allies? Definitely. Yeah, sure. Great answer. What does it mean to come out of the closet? When you come out of the closet, it means like when you're playing hide and seek and you're hiding in the closet and then someone finds you and then you have to come out of the closet and you have to be it. Makes sense. What do you think about gay marriage? I just think it's normal marriage. Right. My auntie, I know who, I know that she's gay. She hasn't married yet. And I'm just wondering if I am going to be her flower girl. And you know what? When you find out that your auntie is going to marry a woman and your number one concern is if you're going to be the flower girl, you have your priorities straight. Woo! Do you think it would be cool to have two moms? Yes. If the house is full of girls and there's no boys in sight. Yeah. You don't have to flush the toilet for the boys. So many advantages. What would it be like to have two dads? 
It would be crazy. It depends on it depends on how their personality is. If they're a party animal, then it would be obviously crazy. Any yeah. parent who's a party animal would be crazy. Yeah. Can you name any gay celebrities? Ellen DeGeneres. Uh-huh. What about Neil Patrick Harris? Who's that? Ooh, Do we know Ricky Martin? No. no. Ricky Martin is a singer. And now he's a gay icon. A gay icon is someone who's revered by the gay community. Sir. Lady Gaga? Yes. Anderson Cooper? I might have heard of him. Jodie Foster? I've heard of him. I crossed my fingers. I'm not lying. Oh. Um, and Jodie Foster is a woman, and she made me question my sexuality when I was a child because I liked her so much. Oh. And she was nude in the film Nell. Not that I remember watching it several times as a child. Wow. Guys, I'm so impressed with you. Remember, what are we to the gay community? We are... Gay icons. Sure. I'm an ally. Maybe I could be an icon. I mean, everybody should aspire to grow up and be a gay icon. And that's what Pride Day is all about. You're right. See you at Pride, everybody. We should celebrate Pride and be proud of ourselves. Stand up for being yourself. There's no one else like you. I'm proud of my family. My mom is out of this world. I'm proud of my mom. My parents support me in everything I do. Everyone's different and everyone's their own person. I'm proud of my style. My style is kind of tomboy. I don't like dress. My style is modern rustic chic. I'm trying to be edgy and cool, but I'm way too soft. My style is all about how I feel. I'm going to perform all over the my world. My friends can flip like me. I love to box. I make and design my own bow ties. I love being a kid. I can do anything. I'm proud of my music. I'm unique. I'm pretty funny. I'm passionate. I'm fierce. I drum all day. I'm proud of my friends. I'm proud of my strength. I'm proud of my bow ties. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of where I'm going. I just do things a little different. You can be the wow child. I'm proud to be who I am. Whoever that's going to be. That's how I rock. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. I'm proud. There is nobody in the media that is exactly like me, yet there are hundreds of people that relate a lot to me. Yeah, I've been told to tone it down. And now I take it as fuel. I'm a queer person. I. I'm so powerful. Young people who are shaping their identities through digital media, through performance, through dance. It's alive, you know what I mean? And it goes a little something like this. That's what I'm doing with my work. I'm trying to create hope. I'm trying to represent lesbian, queer, and transgender culture with my work. Our queerness is the reason why we are great. It's not just a side thing. Oh, they're an amazing artist, but they just happen to be queer. We are amazing because we are queer. sort of encourage each other to create the kind of future that we want to see and to come together because that's the only way really. We're simply changing the world. All right, hey everyone, it's TVC Mario and you're here for a video I needed to make to go ahead and discuss Pride Month. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have a month in the year where the abominable sin of homosexuality and the transgender sin is glorified. The Bible says what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to the Lord. And I really can't think of anything else that perfectly describes that Bible verse that the world will elevate something and worship basically an ideology or something and that god finds that abominable and that is clearly what we see here i know it's not politically correct but it is biblically correct and as christians we have all the right and freedom to express our beliefs and if you don't like it you can go ahead and leave that's what makes this country and our country so beautiful the freedom to express ourselves so one thing I wanted to comment on this whole uh, celebration of Pride Month with Jesse Cruikshank sitting down with her favorite pint-sized squad to talk about gay pride and 
all the things that she did. Now, I found this to be abhorrent. I think it's absolutely disgusting. Why are you talking about sexuality with very young kids? Over and over, notice this. They target the young ones to talk about sexuality. She talked about nudity with the kid. And when you go to gay pride parades, you end up seeing, and I've commented on this, young little boys dancing with naked men parading themselves around them. It is one of the most grotesque things. And listen, all of you out there who are part of the homosexual community, I know not all of you do this, but why is it that when you go to the parades, it is grotesque. You get nude. You can't even have common human decency. Listen, we're telling you it is a sexual perversion. Then you go and prove us right by expressing these pride parades by getting all nude in front of kids, having kids dance inappropriately. I documented this. This is one of the most sick, disgusting acts I've ever seen done. And it was done at pride parades. You actually want your kids to go to these things, the average people? No. And then this video talking about allies, listen, I'm not a hater and I want to see all them, them homosexuals burn. That's what I want. I want y'all to burn. No. Okay. And it, for those of you who believe that because a Christian disagrees with homosexuality, their lifestyle, sin, God's judgment, heaven or hell, all these things, that we're somehow some bigot. That's the biggest ridiculous lie. It is not true. By the way, guess what, viewer? I not only think homosexuals are going to hell, I think if you don't believe in Jesus, you going to hell too. You're all going to hell if you don't have Jesus. That's what we believe. You think that's offensive for us to say that homosexuals are going to hell? Let me step it up a notch for you. We think you're all going to hell if you don't have Jesus. Just to clarify, okay? So homosexuals, liars, unbelievers, atheists, Buddhists, you're all going to hell. That's what we believe. Okay? And do we believe that because we're somehow bigoted and hateful? No! We believe in the theology that God is a just and holy God who on judgment day will judge the world. And it is not by righteousness that a person can er in enter into the kingdom of God. It is by faith and having the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ, which means it is not based upon our own merit, but only by the faith that we have in Christ, who he lived the perfect life. So you clearly don't understand Christianity. Your hatred towards us is unjustified. It comes from your inability to comprehend us and even understand what we're saying to you. But this is absolute nonsense. So we live in a culture and generation that is teaching young kids the sin of homosexuality and normalizing these things. There are biblical examples like Sodom and Gomorrah that show what happens to societies that adopt these ideologies. Mark my words, there's coming a great judgment of God and a destruction upon the nations who adopt such horrendous sin. It is clearly shown in the uh, scriptures that God operates in this fashion. And you want to know why? Because sin brings destruction. Sin kills, steals, and destroys individuals, families, relationships, and nations. And so we will see the consequence of this adoption, the celebration of man's rebellion, of man's sin against God, and even more so when it lures in the little children inappropriately talking to them about watching nudity. Hey, I s hey, kitties, come around the table. Let me tell you about the one time I was sexually aroused and I thought I was a lesbian because I watched a girl get nude on an inappropriate... What are you doing? What? Adults. Yo, yo, hello, hello. Adults out there. Yeah, see, even the dog's barking. Hello? Hello? Yeah, come on, Dexter. Come on, tell them. What, what, anyone out there? Anyone home? Wake up. Do you not see that that was the most disgusting, inappropriate thing done to kids? But we have become so desensitized. So lost. Give me a second. Dexter, we need to calm down. I know they're out of control. Just, yes, chill. <laughs> He's so cute. I'm babysitting my mom. My mom's puppy. But we have become so desensitized, so lost when it comes to evil, that this is the reality now, that this sick, disgusting act can be done. She's talking about sexual arousal that made her question her sexuality when watching nudity to children. Parents, are you that desensitized? You should write CBC a letter. Wake up. That's beyond disgusting. And then moving on to Nickelodeon over here, celebrating pride with the kids. And... Pay attention to what they did. Did you guys catch it? Did you notice it? 
how sick and disgusting what they did was? Do you notice that they said, I am proud to be a good singer, proud to, you know, be an amputee, able to do this cool wheelchair, that's really cool, good for you, I'm proud that you can do that as well, and all these other things that did not relate to homosexuality, but also tied them into pride and said that, well, I can do these things, do you see what they're doing? They're elaborating pride so that pride now means something which is basically, well, I'm going to just be proud of being myself. Whether that's playing drums or running around and they're tying that all into homosexuality. So the kids that stand up against homosexuality, which would be to stand up for biblical truth, will be perceived against uh, like kids who are standing up against the individuality of people. When it's false, okay? Oh my goodness, the things that they're doing. And well, of course, we have to finish with our YouTube spotlight. Hashtag proud to create. Pride 2018. You know Google, YouTube had to let us know how proud they are and how anti-Christian they are going to continue to be. I guarantee this video will de be, uh, be demonetized. It's very probable that the algorithm will make sure that it doesn't get the amount of views and exposure that the video even deserves. And what you'll see is that the YouTube spotlight video right here will be shoved in everybody's inbox, whether we like it or not, because YouTube wants to change the world. Did you hear that? They have creators for change. And who are they? Well, they're one-sided. There's no Christian representation that's true biblical Christian, born again like myself, who could represent the other side of the uh, perspective. Of course not. Uh, they just want to create their little safe space where Christian voices are silenced and their voices are magnified. So, of course, more YouTube proud. I can't, nothing else to even say about it. Just pure nonsense. Stay prayed up. Stay vigilant. Fear no evil. Well, as you can see, this is a disgusting video. Uh, some of the things in here, I'm sure many of you did not realize. You did not realize that children are being exposed through this kind of propaganda, but they are. They're being exposed to this in the public schools every single day. And if you don't believe that, you go into a public school and you ask the administration or you ask the faculty what the stand is on this issue and they will tell you it's positive, it's affirming, it's welcoming, it's celebrating. And even worse than this video clip that we saw is actually being promulgated among our young people. So we have a problem, Christians, we have a problem and that is that our society is going the way of Sodom and Gomorrah in the Old Testament. Now, where did Sodom and Gomorrah end up? They ended up in the fiery judgment of God. That's where our society in the United States is heading. We're heading in the direction of a fiery judgment from God. And there's nothing in the world that's gonna stop that short of a miracle. Only God in his divine mercy and grace and supernatural power can stop our nation from going the way of Sodom and Gomorrah. So what do we do as Christians and as Christian parents? Well, what we do is we teach people the Word of God and we don't ever stop teaching people the Word of God. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. It doesn't matter how dark it gets. We teach people the Word of God, including we teach our children the Word of God. And when we find out that our children are being taught things contrary to the Word of God, such as on this, the normalization of perversity, we pull our children out of public schools. We pull our children out of programs, after school programs, any kind of programs, any group, any structure of society that is influencing them to go against the will of God, we pull them out. And that's going to be difficult in many cases because um, every family doesn't have enough money to hire a tutor or a homeschooler or a private Christian college or school or grade school or high school. Uh, we don't all have the finances to do that. So it's going to be hardship, but you have to make a decision. Do you want your child converted 
into the satanic LGBT movement? Do you want them defending sin? Do you want them promoting Sodom? You know, uh, we have to make tough decisions here. And the first thing we need to do is be aware that this is happening. This is happening right now. It's not coming to the United States. It's already here as Mario presented in his video. And what we need to do is we need to think long and hard and pray about this. And we need to say, what are we going to do to protect our children? What are we going to do to teach them the right way and to teach them the truth and teach them what is good? How do we protect our children from the evil one? It is the parent's responsibility to protect the children. So if you are being uh, pushed and intimidated and coerced and manipulated into exposing your children to this propaganda, you need to object to it. You need to tell your school you don't want any of this kind of garbage in your school. And then if they won't stop it, you need to take your child out. And that may, may mean homeschooling. Even though you're not a professional teacher, you can do a better job of teaching than teaching this kind of garbage in the school. So we have to make some tough decisions we have to make them now, and I would encourage you to be in prayer about this. Don't let your child be taken from you mentally, spiritually. Don't let your child be caught up in our pagan culture. We need to take responsibility and pull them out if we have to, or teach them ourselves if need be. So I hope that's helped you, but we'll see you back here next week in another edition of Christian Answers. God bless. on an inappropriate what are you doing what adults yo yo hello hello adults out there yeah see even the dogs barking hello hello yeah come on dexter come on tell them what, what anyone out there anyone home wake up do you not see that that was the most disgusting inappropriate thing done to kids but we have become so desensitized so lost give me a second dexter we need to calm down I know they're out of control. Just, yes, chill. <laughs> He's so cute. I'm babysitting my mom, my mom's puppy. Mm -hmm.